Hi, it's Jeff Murrow, and I want to welcome you to True Texas History. And today, I figured I would end the week by going ahead and talking about Pirates and the Republic of Campeche Part 2. Um, you know, hopefully you, you caught the video yesterday and you're familiar with uh, some of the stuff about Pirates. Uh, I'm going to pick up with that today because um, it does get quite interesting. Um, okay, if you remember from yesterday, uh, the Lafitte brothers went ahead and moved in on My uh, Michael Ari and his uh, organization operating out of Galveston. And they went ahead and declared the Republic of Campeche, well, uh, and later the Republic of Mexico. Uh, because initially the whole Republic of Mexico... Uh, at that point, uh, was a joke, and it was just an excuse to go ahead and uh, make raids on people. Now, there were some settlers in Texas, and many times what happened uh, is that uh, the Lafitte brothers uh, carried on uh, their trade in contraband. Now, one of the people that they teamed up with, <gasps> Jim Bowie, um, who also assisted with the, the trading operations there, um, but, uh, you know, when you're making money, it, sometimes you, it, it leads to some interesting connections. But anyways, uh, the, the Lafitte organization continued uh, doing their plundering, um, and there was finally a falling out between the Lafitte brothers and uh, Ari. Ari left uh, Texas and went on to uh, Florida, where he continued some other stuff. Now, the other three, uh, the Lafitte, well should say more but the Lafitte brothers uh, Henry Perry and Mina uh, an association with uh, some local uh, Mexican guerrillas went ahead and decided to uh, invade Mexico and legitimately uh, declare independence from Spain and uh, their expedition ended up uh, having a big uh, shootout so to speak uh, there at uh, Presidio La Bahia, otherwise known as Goliad. You know, um, although the pirates were there, you, you seldom hear about the connection of uh, pirates and Goliad. I know that the, the last time I was down in Goliad, you know, uh, saw no mention at all of uh, Henry Perry or the Lafitte brothers uh, and uh, Mina. But... Uh, it came to a disastrous end, and that uh, got rid of some of the pirates in Texas. Uh, you know, I think La Bahia would actually do pretty good if, you know, in their gift shop they had, you know, pirate eye patches and stuff like that. You know, it would go along with the uh, uh, Goliath Independence flag. But anyways, uh, back to uh, the story. Now, uh, Lafitte was not killed in uh, that episode. He uh, continued his operation out of Galveston. Uh, in fact, um, there, uh, he started assisting a, uh, French general, General Lalleman, who was setting up a French colony, uh, Champ de Isle, uh, over near Liberty, Texas. And, um, a lot of the colonists were there and he, uh, assisted that, um, and at one point, Lafitte actually considered uh, selling out uh, the colonists, you know, because he was willing to do whatever uh, for money. Uh, but he didn't, and instead went ahead and protected Lalleman. Now, uh, the Spanish governor uh, heard about this French colony, and he was freaked out. Uh, and in preparation, you know, for what he thought was going to be a, a big French invasion, he went ahead and stationed troops in uh, San Marcos, Texas. Oh, hi, Jonathan Perez. Uh, give you a shout out there. Uh, but he, they had a, uh, you know, the Spanish were there. Now, now, put it in context, you know, Spain and uh, France had been locking horns uh, in a major way in the Napoleonic Wars. So just hearing rumors uh, that there's a French general setting up a colony here uh, in the area you're supposed to be taking care of was very frightening uh, for the Spanish governor at the time. But uh, the colony kind of fell apart uh, when a hurricane hit 
you know, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, the Liberty, Texas area. You know, it's out there near Anahuac and over there at the uh, north part of Galveston Bay. Uh, and it's very, uh, what's that say? Oh, <laughs> uh, it's one of those areas that's prone to a lot of flooding. I know there's a lot of gators out there. And uh, the settlers had some problems there. Now, there were some that continued there. Uh, but Lafitte helped those that survived the hurricane to get back to Louisiana. Uh, you know, if you're ever over there in the Liberty County area, uh, there's still some old Frenchmen in that area, and um, they go back to these colonists. Um, now, uh, then in 1819, some interesting things happened. You had the whole uh, Seraphine episode. Now, the Seraphine, uh, there were rumors that there was a ship named the Seraphine, which was supposed to sail to St. Helena and bring Napoleon back to America. Now, people, you know, this is one of those uh, elusive ships that you uh, people talk about and no one knows. Uh, there was a place prepared for uh, Le Emperor in New Orleans. Uh, in fact, it's called the Napoleon House even to this day. And uh, the whole plan was, you know, that uh, Lafitte was going to sail down there on the Seraphine. Uh, and Napoleon was going to go out for his walk in a wide-brimmed hat, and they were going to swap out uh, an imposter uh, for Napoleon and bring him back. Now, uh, no record has ever been found of the Seraphine, although rumors persisted that uh, Lafitte made that journey. Uh, there is some evidence that another ship, Le Comet, or in other words, the Comet, uh, which was a French frig frigate, and a blockade runner of some notoriety uh, was missing for quite a period of time. Now, it was about this time also that the James Long expedition came into Texas. And, uh, of course, James Long, you know, uh, wanted uh, Lafitte's assistance, and uh, Lafitte didn't give it to him because he was fixing to go on a long journey. Uh, now, whether or not that journey did involve Napoleon, we don't know for sure, but we do know that Lafitte was gone for a while. Uh, now, although Lafitte did not help out uh, James Long, uh, when James left his uh, wife there at Galveston Bay, um, Jane Long, uh, Lafitte and his men did help her. Now, uh, there, there's some other interesting things after this. Uh, because what happened, uh, this fella, an emissary from the United States, came along uh, to Lafitte's headquarters, a fellow by the name of George Graham. You know, he came knocking on the door. Sorry about that. And uh, George Graham uh, came to Lafitte with the proposal. And the proposal was they wanted uh, Lafitte to run a false flag operation. You know, you, you think that that's something that uh, only happened in the late 20th century, early 19th? Uh, I mean, late 20th century, early 21st? No. Espionage and spy games like that and, running, and governments running false flag operations, that's an old one. Uh, and what Graham wanted Lafitte to do was to stage a faked invasion of Texas, uh, you know, against some of the, the colonists here. And then the colonists would say, help, help, America, help, come send troops. And the whole idea was that the Americans uh, would send troops, uh, rescue those uh, that were calling for help uh, to defend them against the pirates, and end up. Uh, claiming that area is part of the United States. Uh, this was the ploy used in, in Florida. This was the ploy used, uh, same strategy in West Florida. And uh, it was being used again or proposed here in Texas. Uh, now Lafitte turned him down. Uh, and after Lafitte turned him down, the United States went ahead and sent some frigates to remove uh, said pirate from Texas, and they did so under the the same authority that uh, they cited in removing the Barbary pirates. I mean, you never thought about the, the Barbary pirates and some of the uh, things that uh, Jefferson did against them as uh, setting a precedent, but it did, and that was the same precedent that they used for removing 
uh, Lafitte from power. Because keep in mind, this was not U.S. territory at that time. And the U.S. had no authority here. So what gives them the right to send in more ships and blast the pirates away? Well, uh, the Barbary Pirate uh, episode. And um, so anyways, that ended uh, the, the Texas Association with Pirates. Uh, now, an interesting end note, uh, the original name of Anahuac was, I'll give you three guesses, known as Perry's Point, named after Henry Perry the Pirate. Uh, but it was later uh, when they were doing a uh, removal of any Anglo terms uh, or, or Western terms for, well, any English terms for uh, Texas cities, and uh, they changed the name from Perry's Point to Anahuac. Uh, this was one of the efforts that Mexico made in order to seize more control of Texas, but that comes later. Uh, but uh, the area around there does have a long connection with pirates. Uh, it's fascinating history, and I hope you enjoyed the, the story today. And uh, we'll be back next week. If there's any particular topic uh, that you're interested in, you want me to cover more about, uh, feel free to let me know. But until then, uh, have a great weekend. Vaya con Dios. Bye.